Back here at home, few display say Halloween quite like the Jefferson Street Graveyard in West Suburban Naperville. It isn't really a cemetery, rather, it's a front yard that comes to life with the faces and sounds of death each year. CLTV's Bob Ario has the story. At the corner of Jefferson and West this time of year, you'll find a one-of-a-kind cemetery. Hey, what are you all looking at? Don't be so disgusted. If you're passing by at the right time, Scully will explain to you why he and his friends appear this time of year. It dates back to 1904, when Scully and friends were playing with a Ouija board. It's no doubt and will become the essence of Halloween that very night. Each of us was changed into a Jefferson graveyard pool. The story behind the story of Scully and Friends are brothers Steve and Robert Veach. The two decided to use their expertise to create a Halloween story and show like no other, combining art, music, and computers to bring it all to life. And then the concept of having the computer create all the control movements was kind of unique. And, and my brother designed circuitry to help us do that in a very unique way. So there's really nothing like this that we know of. I like to stay by the fence here and just watch kids' reactions to it. And, uh, they're just amazed by it, and uh, it's just it's a neat feeling. Computer instructions and music are all combined on one compact disc. The character movement and sounds are synchronized to give a realistic feel. I think this damn ground's gonna be the death of me. The cemetery show is not scaring too many people, which means it will be back next year. You see, for their souls to be freed by demonic spirits, Scully and the others must frighten folks. So as the song here goes, they'll have to take comfort in the fact that it's cool to be a ghoul. <laughs> CLTV News. If Bride of Chucky wasn't scary enough for you, we're in Naperville and we're taking you to a morning tour of a cemetery. That and more coming up in a moment. And we are getting in spirit. Halloween this weekend. That's right, a few days away, and just about every town has at least one family that goes all out when it comes to holiday decorating. Oh, all out doesn't even come close <laughs> to describing what Robert Beach has done to his home this Halloween. ABC 7's Judy <laughs> Garcia joins us this morning with the details. I'm so frightened to see what's coming up. I'm stunned. Go ahead, tell you, us what's going on you there. You have reason to be all frightened, right. Leah. Take a look at this stuff. Now, besides being just visually kind of horrifying, there's also voice and music that brings this Jefferson Cemetery to life. Two brothers did this, two of them. One of them's here with me now, Steve. Steve, you're responsible for the music and the voices, which I have to tell you are very haunting. Thanks, yes, uh, I did all the computer programming and the music. Uh, I own a computer consulting firm in Oak Brook, so it was natural for me to do the computer programming. And I also own a small music studio, so it was natural for me to do the music. Now you have a nice, pleasing speaking voice, but the voice of the narrator here, yes. this guy, yes. is haunting and deep and ominous. How do you do that? Uh, I just talk real deeply. No, actually I don't. I use uh, state-of-the-art digital equipment, uh, software and hardware, and uh, we process it very heavily. Uh, he also talks about uh, four semitones flatter than I do. Ah, four semitones flatter for you guys. Now, you also have a lot of music mist going. The mist adds a lot, I have to tell you. Thanks, yes. Uh, we worked on that quite a bit uh, just to get the right level of smoke. How did you guys get started doing this? Well, my brother started a couple of years ago, and then I got involved at that point as well. This is the second year we've done it. Uh, this is much more elaborate this year, actually. And we're doing it for a couple of reasons. One, just for, as a community kind of thing for free, but we're also trying to promote my brother's uh, business, Chicago Animatronics. We want to let people know what is possible, uh, both in the retail industry and uh, in the Hollywood industry. Quite, uh, in fact, all of the figures, corpses, complete corpses and partial corpses move. 
Yes, they do. All, all of them, completely. They have full articulation. They're fully computer controlled. We can t we can make it extremely realistic. They can actually model individual syllables. It's very realistic. Even though they don't have lips. Yes, exactly. Right. We have to imagine that they that they do that they had lips at one point. How long does it take you guys to set this up, and what kind of an undertaking is this? It takes about uh, about three and a half hours to four hours to set it all up. That's not bad. No, it's not bad at all. Yeah. Now, if somebody wants to do this at their home, will you guys actually do something for them? Not at a home, <laughs> but at a retail establishment, maybe. All right. Well, we're going to hear about the mechanical aspects of this when we talk to Robert coming up in just a moment. It is frightening. And i got to tell you, once darkness sets, it's getting a little lighter, so it's not quite as ominous now. A little earlier with all this mist and these talking bodies, you don't want to know. Live in Naperville, live in Naperville, in the cemetery. Judy Garcia, ABC 7 News. Leon Jose, back to you. Judy, I like your line. Quite an undertaking. Mm. All ah, right. That's nice. pretty good. <laughs> we'll see you in a few minutes. My friend here wants to scare the socks off you. We'll tell you all about it in a moment. It's 647 <laughs> and it's time to get spooked again at the creepy house in Naperville. This, it's this thing, that you know, it really freaks time. us out. <laughs> you know, Judy is with someone and at a home in Naperville. That it's not your typical home this time of year. Oh, hey, it's the home of the dead. It's a morning visit to the cemetery. And with us now is Steve, no, Robert Veach. See, we interviewed Steve a minute ago. You and your brother work together. He does the computer programming. You do the robotics. Yeah, I do work on the robotics and the circuitry that controls them, all the mechanical elements of the show. Now, there are several moving bodies in this cemetery. Talk to us about what kind of undertaking this is. Uh, it's a lot of building. It's about maybe uh, a year's worth of mechanical building and about a half year's worth of electronic building to uh, do all the circuitry involved and all the mechanics. And there's also pneumatics involved in it that move heavier objects. Okay, of course, now that we're talking, they're not moving. But they do. <laughs> they move quite a bit throughout the show, and you have a narration that goes with it. We can hear things happening. There are a couple moving fingers here. You guys spent about $10,000 making this thing come to life. That's, that's true. Uh, it's very expensive. All of it's handmade, too. And um, we're kind of showing the technology that we could do for uh, Chicago Animatronics, and it's a company we formed. And this is kind of just a preview of what we're able to do. Um, actually, $10,000 sounds like a lot, but in reality, it's not, because a lot of it's handmade. One, and, two, three, four moving bodies. Five, yeah. actually, if you count yeah, the fingers. Right, five moving bodies, yeah. And they all do various things. You know, there's a, a vampire that flaps her wings and, and uh, lifts up, and there's characters that move their heads fully articulated. Right. And, uh, of course, can we get this thing started, Steve? Can we actually see it moving? Do you need to give somebody a signal to start a switch? Yeah, my, my brother has to uh, run the program. Um, okay. So uh, he probably has it in a loop mode, and it got out of the loop mode. Okay. But we've been watching these things all morning, and really, the body movements are incredibly realistic, and the body parts are <laughs> scary. Yeah, that was my goal, is kind of make it as scary as possible. And uh, kids come by, and you think they're going to be too scared, and they say, I'm not scared at all. You know, make it scarier next year. You're so, kidding. No, they're not scared. They just love it. And uh, See, I'm up close and personal, and I can see that these things are robotic, but i got to tell you, they look gross, like you wouldn't <laughs> want to touch them. Yeah, well... Sometimes I don't want to touch them either. The, the late, it's all latex on there. It's all uh, fake material. Um, but uh, they do look pretty real. And that's my goal was to make it look pretty real. Now, ultimately, you'd like for merchandisers um, in the area to see it and say, hey, I could use that as, say, someone standing out in front of the store promoting sales, etc. Yeah, I think so. I think that uh, even at trade shows, uh, it'd be great to have a character that would be announcing a product line or something like that. And for retail sales and in the motion picture industry, sometimes they have a shot that's dangerous for a stunt person to do, and they need something like this to take that, that spot for that shot. So. Well, unfortunately, we're not seeing too much movement in them right now. Probably, but uh, if anyone wants to come out to see it, you are at the corner of in Naperville, and you're calling this the... Jefferson Cemetery, Halloween 98. And it'll come to life Friday and Saturday? Yeah, we're also going to be running it during the week, this week, all during the week, from 6 till 9, and then Halloween Saturday from 6 till 11. Okay, so if anyone wants to see these bodies come to life, I know, Jose's already seen The Bride of Chucky, so it'd be tough to scare him, but even he would be scared by this. I think so, too. It kind of scares me, too, at night. 
In fact, we were saying this earlier that when it was still dark outside, this mist and everything adds quite an aura to the place. You'll have to come out and see it. Six to nine this week, Friday, Saturday, of course, this weekend's Halloween, so come on out and get scared out of your socks. Reporting live in the cemetery at Naperville, Judy Garcia, ABC 7 News, Leon Jose, back to you. Judy, can you imagine coming home from a party and you don't no. know that that's there? <laughs> <laughs> just <so> bad. <laughs> no. Oh, in fact, bad this is the only time I'm going to be in the cemetery. Sorry, I'm not coming back when it starts. I don't blame it's scary you. enough now. <laughs> Thanks so much, Judy. You'd be like, what's in what's that punch? Happened? There you go. <laughs> and don't give me any more. No kidding. The ghouls have been busy practicing at the Jefferson Street graveyard. This Halloween display has quickly become a Chicago area tradition, even though it's only a few years old. One of the attractions, none of these characters are alive. But don't get out the cross and garlic just yet, they're animatronic robots. You have characters that move and talk, kind of like we do, and uh, the good thing is I don't have, I don't have to feed them. <laughs> This display has become so popular that Naperville had some grave concerns about the show and all the traffic it was causing on designer Robert Reach's front lawn. So the ghouls have moved to a new haunt at Cottonwood Farms in Crest Hill. The little kids aren't scared. They really love the show and they like the music in there and the, the smoke and everything like that. It's not scary. It's a creative and, and, uh, and funny in some ways. With names like Scully, Brains, and Numbskull, the graveyard is sure to be a scream with visitors this Halloween. And keep coming back because each builds a new character every year. <laughs> Melissa Ross, CLTV News. Jefferson Graveyard is a creepy animatronic monster show put together in a giant corn silo. The attraction, which is $2 extra, is the twisted brainchild of the brothers Steve and Robert Beach. You guys have got a pretty sick imagination. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Absolutely. Some people call it creativity. Good morning. That's funny music for how scared we're going to get. We are in the uh, Silo Theater at Seagull's Cottonwood Farms. Um, the graveyard, so to speak. Robert Beach with us this morning. Good morning from Chicagoland Animatronics. What is it you do? Um, I build custom animatronic displays for the Halloween industry. Mm -hmm. And behind me is the Jefferson Graveyard at Seagull's mm -hmm. Cottonwood Farms. So a little bit later this morning, some school kids are going to come and sit where we are and uh, see what kind of show. Hopefully they'll be a little scared, but they'll also be entertained. It's kind of a balance that we've achieved here, mm -hmm. and they really like it, kids. Mm, let's check out some of the characters you've got going. Um, it's a dead show, eh? <laughs> yeah, a bunch of dead characters that work for no pay. All they do is feed them electricity, and uh, they entertain the crowds, and they talk about a, a nice story about Halloween, how they got here, and um, it ends with uh, some dramatic sequences, and people really enjoy the show. The show. <laughs> Little kids, is it appropriate for that? Yeah, we, it kind of covers the range. We've had two or three year olds in here. Some kids get a little scared, but then again, once the lights come on and they see them singing, they usually have no problem with it. What do they sing? Well, you're singing a song about how they play with a Ouija board and they turn into these characters, and they're kind of describing the story about Halloween, how it all began. Mm -hmm. These dead guys look really angry. <laughs> Actually, they're pretty friendly. You know, once they start singing, all the uh, scariness kind of goes away. And they tell jokes, too. They make fun of how they look to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a dead guy to make fun of another dead guy's looks. <laughs> yeah. I guess when you're both dead, you can get away with doing that. <laughs> Do you, do you do other animatronics too? Um, I have a couple other characters. I have a life-size Bill Clayton character and I have a Santa Claus character that I've, that I've uh, produced and built. Mm. So, you know, when it's dark in here as it is right now and kids are lined up and they're really close to this graveyard, 
They start running for the exits? Uh, some kids do. Um, once the lights come on, they're usually okay. But the beginning begins with a real kind of a dramatic sequence, and they kind of get a little nervous. And I have candy in the back of the stage here, so I kind of give them candy until the lights come on. <laughs> well, that one guy's twitching around. He's making me nervous. <laughs> Yeah, that's the idea. Kind of make them look like they're kind of real and they move around, um, a little animated. They laugh, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it's just something to entertain the crowd and get them in the mood for Halloween. Mm -hmm. hey, now, have you been around the, the farm checking out the other parts, the other scary Halloween-related things? Oh, sure. Uh, this is a great farm here. There's um, the haunted barn that people can walk through and uh, kind of see several different images, uh, kind of scary Halloween things. Mm -hmm. And of course all the animals here and everything, there's a hayride and everything. And in the evenings there's a Statesful Haunted House, which is really good haunted house, very <laughs> scary. I won't even go through it, it's too scary for me. <laughs> <laughs>
because if they don't scare people properly, they have to come back every year as ghouls. Well, Scully, how do you think we did? everyone to come out and uh, see the show. Obviously it looks very different at night when it's even scarier. And the show is completely free to everyone. You know what? I am in Naperville at the Haunted House, the Jefferson Grave. Ooh, and things are a lot scarier here than they are on the roadways. Let's go to the traffic edge and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Traffic is moving fine. Some creepy, creepy creatures out here. <laughs> and yes, it's kind of uh, late for these guys to be up, but we'll wake them up in a second and find out what they're talking about. As far as traffic goes, a lot of, uh, of new pavement to drive on on 57, so that's some new good news for you there and not ghoulish at all. Lakeshore Drive at the always are moving fine. Dick and Ellie, back to you. All right, <laughs> Andy, we are at the Haunted House, the uh, Jefferson Graveyard in Naperville, and we got this cool little gizmo, which, and that's actually its name, this cool little electric car, but I'm not quite sure about the driver. I don't know about that, but you know what I'm sure about the driver? I think I found somebody who wants to do weather. He's really scaring me, too. And this is not a real person. This is actually an animatronic robot out at this Naperville Haunted House in celebration of Halloween. We'll show you more stuff going on here. We'll show you some of the roadways right now ah! oh oh my goodness there was a scary thing came up behind me okay all right i think i'll be okay 57 in the ford not too bad like your drive is doing decently and uh <laughs> i think it's time to send it back to you at the studio <laughs> that looks real gene it, it's you know what its eyes even blink ellie it's oh really my it's, it's kind of creepy wow. but i guess that's the point <laughs> are you disclosing what crept up behind you or uh it was it was actually the child of the man who put this all together oh. and he had a mask on and he yeah it was <laughs> gotcha. I, i'm embarrassed but thanks dick <laughs> uh, you're an easy target huh yeah i'm right, gonna gene. get goosebumps out here it's really creepy in this graveyard i don't know how much longer I I can stand it but you know what you can stand traffic this morning things aren't too bad out there here we are in naperville as mike told you we're at for the Jefferson Graveyard. Uh, if you want to stop by, uh, it starts right after dark uh, uh, in the evenings, and you can get your uh, creepy-licious evening on. <laughs> and let me tell you something, it's pretty frightening. These are animatronic figures, and we're going to find out more about the brothers who put this whole thing together. It's movie-quality stuff here. They look really real and are kind of frightening, including all of the smoke and mirrors and things. So we'll uh, tell you about how they put it all together and what you can expect when you come out here to Naperville back to you in the studio. Well, the skulls are hungry and they want cash. <laughs> this is a free show, but they accept donations. I found a rat that's bigger than a city rat. How about that? <laughs> back to you Yuck. guys. In <laughs> Naperville? <studio. laughs> Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> oh, no. And yes, we're live at the Jefferson Graveyard. We'll tell you how they put this graveyard together to scare the you-know-what out of you, because I'm sure glad the sun is coming up this morning. Details coming up after the break. The Jefferson Graveyard, and it is a haunted house just in time for the Halloween season, and uh, it'll be open until November 1st. We're with the two brothers who put this whole thing together, Robert and Steve Veach. Now, good morning. Thanks a lot for uh, scaring us early. How did this idea come about? How long have you been doing it? We've been doing it for about six years now, and um, we were just discussing Halloween events and shows around town, and we decided to put together a show. Start off really small in front of my yard with one character, and we just built the show up over the years, adding characters and adding some effects and audio, and just got bigger and bigger. Now, you, could, you, you, you two guys are brothers and also engineers. Tell me about these characters, because they look lifelike. A lot of people back at the studio were talking about the same thing. I mean, the, the lights, uh, the, the eyelids on Winston even blink. <laughs> yes, they do. Well, my brother is the expert with the effects. 
Uh, he does all the latex work and all of the, um, the hair work and all of the uh, special effects and all of the control work inside. He's the electrical engineer and the mechanical engineer. I'm the computer guy and the, the music guy and the sound guy. And let me tell you something, that adds to the scariness of it all, but I understand that the house that you guys actually live in, and goodness knows your wife must be really patient for this every Halloween, but you actually believe your house is haunted? Yeah, I do. Uh, maybe these characters bring out some spirits or something, but we've had things come on randomly, CD players starting, lights popping out, things moving, and, <laughs> and, and you know what's interesting, every time after Halloween, I swear these characters move, their heads move on their own, they okay. change the position. enough. I can't even <laughs> take any more. Why aren't they fucking you, Scully? <laughs> this is an amazing well, Halloween display so in Yorkville. Even Maggots don't want to be It's near put me. together by <laughs> Chicago Animatronics of Yorkville and Creative uh, Digital Trust Masters in Aurora. Man. I'll tell you how it's I a in Yorkville. And I wish I could show you more of it in a short amount of time, but you get an idea. This is pretty high end uh, operation here. Does this just in someone's yard? Uh -huh. <laughs> Hey, you guys, I can't get my butt out of the ground, and these nails from my casket are killing me. My kid would be in hey, therapy for years uh, if I took her here. Something's <laughs> got a hold of one of Still ahead here tonight, ghouls, ghosts taking center stage. Sure signs that Halloween is just around the corner. Just ahead here tonight, a big scare in the suburbs. And it's still two weeks until Halloween. Visitors to suburban Yorkville, beware. One wrong turn and you'll be in for a big scare. Ooh. Ghosts and ghouls are lurking in the front lawn at Robert Veach's home. In fact, they've shown up each Halloween for the last 12 years, oh, that's scary. just waiting for you to drop by. And if you're feeling brave, go ahead. The house is on <laughs> Greenville Turn, most nights through the end of the month.